Today we are with my training partner Sherelle and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the big differences between training for men versus training for women. Now to be honest there aren't a humongous amount of big differences in the principles of generating intramuscular tension and having to focus on progressive overload, right? Like, mm. we, all got to, we all got to do that. But there are still a couple of things that I think are a little bit more general observations when it comes to women versus men where you might want to take certain approaches with programming mm. to get maybe more out of the training if you're a woman versus a man. Because I think a lot of the research out there with training and a lot of the training programs out there, they're designed for men. The research is done on men. And it says, oh, you're a woman, you're just a smaller version of me, so you can yeah. do, do what I do. But there are some really big differences. Like mm. I know when I was a trainer working with uh, many, many women, they would be able to do say eight reps yeah. on an exercise and I would put five kilos extra on there, which they should be able to do at least for a couple of reps, maybe five or six reps, mm -hmm. and they would get nothing. And you know, it never made any sense to me until I started learning about some of the different differences between men and women. Mm -hmm. So what I want to ask you is like, what are some of the things that I guess you gravitate towards or that you think women perform better with with training or some of the considerations that you take mm. around training yeah well really good point because like even we've probably seen that training together for a couple of years like there's mm -hmm. definitely been like on the hip thrust where i'll just be able to smash out an extra 10 reps with the same weight uh, right. as to what you you could so i've definitely noticed in myself and then working with women that they have so much more endurance when it comes to training in the gym mm -hmm. being that and I don't know whether it's maybe um, like there's a bit of a psychological component there too, like with weight on the bar as okay. well. Okay. Um, but yeah, I definitely noticed that with some of those, especially specific exercises, like I find, I'm not sure why, but um, you can definitely get out more reps with a similar weight and you can really tie that as well to the menstrual cycle and being able mm -hmm. to get more endurance out of different phases. Right. So when would you see it personally, more endurance? Yeah. When, when do you see it in the cycle? Yeah. Definitely in the follicular phase for myself okay. and obviously most women is it's when you are physiologically, hormonally like a male, mm -hmm. um, being that you can sort of reach higher points of endurance. But then in saying that, estrogen really helps with that too. So estrogen being the primary sex hormone for women, um, it has been researched to sort of correlate with endurance in the gym. Right. Okay. So what do you do, I guess, with, um, with training around that? Like, do you manipulate your trainer? Do you give yourself a structured um, intensity push phase when mm. that's coming? Do you go higher reps then or do you deload what happens yeah i personally do pull back um the week before my cycle mm -hmm. i have gotten to a nice flow pun intended of being able to do that like push in the first sort of two to three weeks mm. and then have a deload and i've actually sort of lined up my mesocycles um to be All able right. to do that as well i'm not saying that everyone needs to do that and there's definitely been times where like in my pms week that i've been able to hit um, strength curves, I think it just means that you've got to have a greater emphasis on recovery. So mm. if I'm sleeping well, eating well, hydrated, like environmental lifestyle stress factors are fine in that later week, um, I'm probably fine in the gym. But if okay. my sleep's gone to rubbish or like if I've got like business stress or other things going on, then stress is stress, right? So mm. I just think your threshold for how much you can um, tolerate is a little bit less. For sure. Do you do anything, I guess, specific with programming uh, apart from the rep range of course but like um rest periods um mm. yeah you spoken about trains with upper lower is a preference there like one thing that i've done in a few of the women's programs that i have is i focus on um accumulative fatigue mm. so we'll do yeah. um multiple sets but with short rest yeah. where it would kill me yeah and it would be a waste of time and it doesn't for, for us right yeah um but for women like because you can't get that same mm. one rep max that i might be able yeah. to if i was doing that um, it's better to do that. So is that something you... Yeah, that's 100% a strategy that we use as well. Like, okay. I think um, we just can tolerate it. And yeah. like, as you mentioned, I think you might be able to get a lot more force and a lot more like strength out of a particular lift, whereas we can definitely get more um, endurance and push for fatigue and sit in those higher rep ranges. So, you know, pairing up supersets and um, mm. and we're specifically talking about hypertrophy, obviously, yeah. um, and what, what their training goals are, but I definitely find that a really good strategy. Right. So I had one more question, which has just completely left my brain. What have you noticed from us training together? Like what have been the biggest things that have surprised you or has been confirmed a thought? Um, the big one is endurance and recovery. Mm. Like we are guilty of taking a much longer rest period than we need yeah. a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> but if we really were putting it down to the wire of how much rest do you really need, I would say that you need a lot yes. less than me. Yeah, and, and I've definitely noticed yeah. that. And we yeah. can both push like to a failure point. Like we're both just like done at the end of the set. 
and it will take me mm. several minutes to recover. Whereas in a couple of minutes, you'll be, you'll be back. You'll be good yep. to go again even though we both went to the point of where we hit absolute exhaustion. Um, <laughs> I which, think something that surprised no. me was the strength wasn't as off as what I thought on mm. exercises like the glute yeah, drive. for sure. Um, that was really surprising to me because I think there is a big stigma that men are significantly stronger mm. than women. And yes, upper body wise, of course. Mm. But when you use like a hip thrust, you know, you can really push your strength. Yeah. Well, actually, that does, yeah, so that brings up my question that disappeared, came back, is rates of growth of muscle building. Mm. Like, there's a big stigma saying women can't grow muscle yeah. as quickly as men, but you know, we've, worked there, we've been training together for two and a bit years now. I've watched the mm. amount of gains you've made. Um, Thank you. you know, <laughs> all the HQ here. Um, but I see that in a lot of women, mm. and I'm sure you do too, where yep. women can make incredible amounts of growth. Um, like, it's, do, you, do you see any difference? I personally don't. Mm. Yeah, I call BS on that. I yeah. just say a lot of women are exercising, and once they start training, they'll start making sure. progress. For and sure. it goes back to our first point when we spoke about calories. Like, mm. if you're not eating to grow, you're not going to grow. Yeah. So I think there's so many, there's so many um, stigmas just from society mm -hmm. that are actually influencing that. And if you look at what's prescribed to women and what appeals to them and, you know, jump squats and bands and all these sorts of things, like... You know, you just got to look at people that are that are like getting good progress in the gym and what they're doing differently. Sure. Um, I started a lot of my reading on like bodybuilding.com and T Nation. I'm glad yeah. I did that because I never went through that sort of like box jump phase yeah, <laughs> that absolutely. I see, you know, for, for muscle building. So I think it comes down to a lot more like who's influencing women mm. to train. Yeah. Because, you know, I would say for sure, like, I just see women can grow just as quickly, if not faster mm. than men. And there's no... Um, sex difference there. Yeah. Um, if anything, like the only thing I do notice is, of course, upper body, you're weaker. Mm. Upper body, you're going to build muscle mass, or it's not going to be as much as me. Yeah. But it's more so because of the relative start points. Yes. You have less muscle mass to begin with. Yes. So the gains you're going to make, they're going to be smaller than mine. Mm. Um, and that's really where the lower body is the same because we have similar amounts of yep. relative muscle size. Mm. But outside of that, like we yep. said before, like we're all human, same muscle tissue, mm. it's different hormonal profiles, of course, but I mean, estrogen is very anabolic. Mm, like exactly. you've got no testosterone, you've got very little testosterone, but you've got a lot of estrogen. I don't yeah. have that estrogen. Yeah. And it can build muscle as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to that? training wise? No, I think you've covered everything. Like you said, I think there's a lot of like nuances that are starting to come out, but mm. it's really important to zoom out and be like, what's actually appropriate mm. versus what am I fixating on? That's not really that important. Like yeah. I see that coming through a lot. Right. And a lot of like people saying menstrual cycle, you have to do this training. Yeah, like I think, I think people forget like the low hanging fruit mm -hmm. is like, you know, training performance. Like, are yeah. you progressively overloading? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why you're not growing. It's got nothing to do with your menstrual cycle. Like it's really sure. important to zoom out and look at those principles that you talk about all the time. Yeah, it's a lot less sexy though, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> yeah. This is how you train on your menstrual cycle. This is my exactly. ebook. There are ways to optimize when you're up to it. Right, right. That's all. Oh, it's a good little <laughs> lead into something else. <laughs> no, that's it. Yeah.